Hey everybody, welcome back to The Kelly O Show. I thought today might be a really great day for me to give you an update on where I'm at in my keto journey. And by that I mean, some of you have watched my recent videos where I shared with you, I'd hit my goal weight and then I started per the instructions of my doctor, um, starting to, I had started to reintroduce carbs, reintro or started to up my calories so that I could um, address working out more, training heavier, and, and this was something that we were really testing out. And what happened was, um, as per, as to be expected, I saw some, I experienced some weight gain. What I also experienced was um, some stomach issues, um, bloating, just not not feeling the way that I wanted to. And really, ultimately, I was actually just talking to my husband about this uh, on the phone on his way home. I'm like, you know, the more that I think about it, it's kind of funny. The first thing that I noticed when I went keto before I experienced the weight loss, the first thing I noticed was how good I felt, how I wasn't bloated all the time. I didn't feel bloated. I didn't feel gassy. I didn't feel like I had these just kind of mini stomach aches all the time. And what's interesting is I was talking to my husband about this just a few minutes ago, and I was talking with my assistant about this, you know, t earlier today and last week. I just, I've said, you know, ever since just this most, in this most recent, I'd say month, month and a half of adjusting my keto diet in trying to add more carbs, trying to maybe increase my calories. I don't know that we necessarily even got to the point where we were increasing my calories. It was more about um, diversifying my keto diet, adding in carbs. I just, my body was not reacting favorably, both with um, gaining, gaining weight and or retaining water, um, but just feeling bloated, tired. Um, I, 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 I felt lethargic a lot. I just haven't felt myself the past, I'd say two months in general, um, ever since tweaking my diet, um, and, and since having, having spoken to my functional medicine doctor, when I felt like I wasn't eating enough and, and she said, okay, well, let's start adding back carbs in outside of your, you know, one higher carb day a week. It was like, okay, now it's, now it's time to maybe not be so strict keto. Let's really start adding in more carbs. And essentially I had added in, um, you know, six, what I view as significantly more carbs. Um, I would say I was having, here's my summary of what I added in. Some of you might laugh when you hear this, but I had added in, um, I was probably having uh, an apple with my husband after dinner, um, an apple sometimes with peanut butter, probably three or four nights a week. Um, I was having uh, oatmeal mixed with uh, eggs for breakfast. Um, sometimes I was doing, actually, I wouldn't say I was having that for breakfast. I was still doing my intermittent fasting, but I was doing oatmeal mixed with eggs several times a week. So I was having oats quite a lot. Um, but most importantly, I was having quite a lot of acai bowls without realizing, even though I was making them at home myself, I was having acai bowls without really measuring the ingredients. And what I learned later is acai bowls, even when you make them at home, um, are so much more sugary and carby and um, more of an insulin response f uh, causing food than you realize. And I will tell you this, not only now do I realize that I just can't tolerate um, an, an acai bowl, it causes a very bad stomach ache. I get very bloated. Um, but the last two times I made an acai bowl, I measured the smallest amount of stuff that I could, like the smallest amount of mixed frozen berries, the smallest amount of like a quarter, a quarter of a cup of, I think, mixed frozen berries, half a cup of frozen strawberries, no banana. I used 
half of an avocado, 46 grams. I still remember this. Um, I think I did a scoop. I think I did a scoop of protein powder. I've now cut out protein powder. I've also realized that is something that I don't do well with. Um, that was another thing I reintroduced um, as I changed my diet. Um, was adding back in things like protein powder. No bueno. Um, could be the sweetener. Could be the whey protein. Um, just taking that out of my life causes stomach aches. Causes bloating. Um, but when I did the um, acai bowl, it was whey protein, avocado, because I'd seen another blogger talk about using avocado instead of banana to make it creamy. I did the minimal amount of frozen berries, minimal amount of strawberries. I used allulose for the sweetener, no honey. Um, I used almond milk, crushed ice, and I think that was it. And even that, smallest amount of everything, and it was still almost 500 calories and I got the worst stomach ache from it. So those were mostly the carbs that I was adding back into my life. Acai bowls, oatmeal, um, whey protein of course has some of the, and that's part of the acai bowls, um, apples, and um, I think that was really it. Oh, and I'm um, gluten-free pizza occasionally. Um, you know, not probably on a Friday, you know, two or three times a month. Um, so that, those were the carbs that I had added back in. And um, I hadn't been weighing myself. And then when, when Steve and I started weighing ourselves again and I got on the scale, my doctor, my functional medicine doctor had told me, you've got to be, you've got to understand that when you start adding carbs back in, you need to be expecting that you will gain probably um, between, I think she said between five to seven pounds, like right away. That That's to be expected. It's water weight, but it is weight that will come on and will stay and you've got to be prepared for it. And I got on the scale and now I hadn't weighed myself in probably seven to nine months. The last time I'd weighed myself, I was 134, which was well below my, um, my original goal weight of 138. I got on the scale, I was 144. So it was 10 pounds higher than the last time I had gotten on my scale at my lowest weight of 134. So of course I freaked out. Now I did weigh my, that was in the middle of the day with my clothes on. So then the next time I weighed myself, I was 142. I think I'm, I think I'm currently 142. Um, and um, so I've since, taken uh i've since been working on taking those carbs out no more acai bowls not doing the oatmeal like that um not having the apples and have read some other books like the glucose revolution which has been incredible um, incredibly enlightening um and i'm really just realizing how when i introduced those foods when i was i've still had i will tell you this I've still had a couple of times, not a lot, some gluten-free pizza. We actually just had gluten-free pizza this weekend. Um, I've had a couple of servings when I've had a stomach ache of oatmeal. I mean, literally when I've just had a stomach ache, no acai bowls because it, it gives me a horrible stomach ache, no apples. Um, so, and obviously no acai bowls, cut out the whey protein. Um, but I haven't been completely back to my strict keto and I can just tell you, um, that I just have, have with just the few things like the, um, oh, that's what it is. I, I remember cause I'm like, there's gotta be something else I was having that wasn't keeping me where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm still not a hundred percent back to where I would call myself back on my strict keto. So I still had like the gluten-free pizza here and there. Um, I, I got this really good recipe for, um, and I'll link up to it down below, these um, gluten-free chocolate chip cookies that are absolutely amazing. And I've made them several times. My husband loves them. Um, I've had them. Each cookie, because I make 30 in a batch, has about 110 to 115 calories. But 
as delicious as they are and as clean as the ingredients are, you use almond um, flour for the, uh, for the flour. Um, there's almond flour and then you use butter, coconut, uh, coconut oil, uh, two eggs. Uh, I'm going by memory because I've made these several times. Two eggs, just three-fourths of a cup of brown sugar is the only sugar in it. Um, vanilla, and then there's these keto chocolate chips that I use and walnuts. Anyway, they're really good, but I've, I've been letting myself have them over the last week. And even though I drink apple cider vinegar, I've learned that from the glucose revolution, drinking the apple cider vinegar before you have um, something like that. And I try to have those at the end of a meal and go for a walk after I've had them. You know, there've been a few times that I've had them on an empty stomach and I just have the apple cider vinegar beforehand. That's very naughty. Um, I, I just have noticed ever since I've let myself have those cookies, I don't feel really great after I, you know, I just, I, I like they taste great while I'm having them. And here's the deal. I have been the past two weeks and I don't know if it's just the cookies. I don't know if it's the cookies, but also the fact that a couple of times over the past month, I've had gluten-free pizza. I don't know if it's that I have been completely inconsistent for some reason with drinking my ketones the past couple of weeks. Um, there's a lot going on in my life right now. I'm dealing with um, a legal matter. Uh, I won't get into the details with that with you guys. It's off the record, uh, but that is definitely preoccupying me. Um, and um, there's there's just a lot that's been heavy on my mind and, and preoccupying me, obviously. Um, but I've really just been off my game. I've been off my workout game. I've been doing really well on one hand with getting... 10 to 12,000 steps in every day. I've been taking my dog for a walk in the morning. We, Steve and I have been going for a walk every single night after dinner. So that's been great, but I've been off my workout game. I have been off my, been very inconsistent taking my ketones uh, twice a day. I've been very inconsistent taking my supplements and my vitamins every day. I don't know what my deal is, but do you ever just feel like you fall off the wagon in one area and then you fall off the wagon in another area and you fall off the wagon? And uh, guys and gals, I'm just gonna tell you, I have not felt great. I've just been feeling bloated, feeling like in the middle of the day, and I, I'll tell you exactly what this is. I've been feeling in the middle of the day, around noon, like I wanna take a nap every day. That's because I haven't been taking my ketones. I'll tell you that right now. I, when I, once I get back to taking my ketones, that'll go away. So that's my own damn fault. Um, I've just been feeling, but the bloatedness. And then <laughs> this gal that I got the recipe for the cookies from, is, it's funny because I obviously was subscribed to her a long time ago on YouTube. I'm gonna link up to her below. And she is now somebody who is a huge gut health advocate. And for some reason, in my head, I have been saying to myself, I really need to start reading up on gut health again. I need to make sure I'm taking my probiotics. I have just felt, have you ever just had this feeling like, all I'm gonna tell you is, I don't know why, but one of the things that I knew I wanted to cover on my YouTube channel here coming up, and for, for myself, I wanted to start researching more about gut health and, and looking into what can I do better for my own gut health because I just have, <laughs> I'm not even trying to make this as a joke. I have this gut feeling that my gut is not well. Um, I, I just, the fact that I have been constantly bloated the past several weeks, maybe it's, maybe it's strictly this, the fact that I feel so good when I am more strict keto. Um, and the fact that I reintroduced some of these carby things, who knows what it is? I mean, I, I think about the things I'm telling you and I'm wondering what it could be. The whey protein, 
that could make sense because that has some fake ingredients in it. Do I think an apple is making me bloated? No. Do I think um, oatmeal is making me bloated? No, really? I mean, I'm using Bob's Red Mill gluten-free oatmeal. Um, do I think that, um, let's see, what else was I talking about? That I, gluten-free pizza? Do I think that that was? Hmm, you never know. That's, that's kind of one of those things that, but you know, I just, I, I, there's, there's something to be, maybe, maybe what I need is just a reset. You know, maybe it's just that, um, I'm trying to think of it, you know, the ingredients in those cookies are very clean. I told you what, and maybe it's the sugar, maybe it's the sugar in those and, and, and maybe my body just can't handle it. You know, maybe, I mean, I obviously am very sensitive. So either way, you know, life, here's, here's what I say. I'm going to say this to summarize, to, to close up, because this is, this is what I want to say to, to all of you. And I think we should all look at this, whether it is gut health, going on a diet to lose weight, going on keto, whatever. Life is, life is too short to go around being bloated. Life is too short to go around being unhealthy and not able to live life to its fullest, right? And to me, you know, when I'm bloated and walking around like Saturday, we were, we were here and we were, um, we were watching the game and I remember Steve and I were supposed to go out for a date night, Saturday night. I, you guys, I was so bloated. I remember like showing my husband, I said, look at me. I have like pregnant belly situation going on right now. And I said, I don't know why I'm bloated like this. I said, look at my tummy. And, and we ate for, for lunch that day one of our typical like egg skillets, like a total keto lunch. So something else was making me, in that case, it was, I know it wasn't a result of what we ate for lunch. It was something else like bigger picture that was making my stomach bloat and stay bloated because then later that day, I was still bloated. I took two ch activated charcoal. It made me feel, it gave me some relief. It made me feel better, but then the bloating came back even when I hadn't eaten anything else. So it's like the activated charcoal made me feel better for a little bit and then I got bloated again when I hadn't even eaten anything. So in other words, there's something in my gut that needs healing and I wanna find out how I can make my gut feel better. There's just, I've seen so many women on YouTube, on social who have gone through this like, and, and I think I'm seeing that for a reason. They've gone through this like, hey, my gut was really bad. I've healed it with food. I'm so much better. I feel like there's something like that needs addressed with my gut. I, I think that, and, and I need to do that and I wanna lead by example with you guys. So I am gonna be doing a lot of research on gut health. I'm probably gonna be doing, making some tweaks in my diet because of that. Maybe everything I've been experiencing the past couple of months has more to do with a leaky gut and, and some gut issues less than, you know, eating some non-keto foods. Who knows? We'll find out, but I will update you. I just want to tell you that, you know, um, pay attention to your body. You know, this oh, can't wait till my hair's longer again. I hate this middle of the road phase. Um, anyway, it's so important to listen to your body. It's so important to like track what's going on with your body, you know? I mean, because your body, it's like a billboard. It's giving you, it's giving you messages. And again, the woman I'm gonna link to, I'm gonna, I'm looking her up right now. I don't know if I can pr pronounce her name. Ma Mariana Dvorska. I hope I'm saying her name correctly. I, when I first saw her pop up, I didn't recognize her. But then when I saw her from four years ago, she has this My Fitness Journey weight loss transformation. And I saw her, her before picture. I remember her from like years and years and years ago when I first got into the fitness space. So it looks like she's somebody who lost weight, kind of got into um, more of like figure competition, bodybuilding. And then more recently 
She's gotten out of the bodybuilding figure competition space. There's a bunch of her videos that are, that are saying like, why I quit bodybuilding, why she's now into Pilates and gut health. And I've just started watching a bunch of these videos over the past weekend because I'm like, that's a, that's a big change, you know, but there's a lot of women and this is not for me to bash bodybuilding, figure competition, all of that. But a lot of women who were in that space, who were eating really bad food, you know, um, you know, all of like the protein shakes, the quest bars with all of the bad ingredients. And then they really destroy their gut. And then a lot of them have figured stuff like this out and then they've come into a more healthy lifestyle. It doesn't necessarily mean everybody's gone to Pilates or whatever. I mean, do what works for you. But, um, I watched a lot of her videos and I think, at this phase in my life, I'm interested to see, you know, what my diet will evolve into. Will I need to stay, um, will, will my insulin resistance keep me in a more uh, keto focused um, eating style for the rest of my life? Will I be able to eat more healthy carbs like what she eats going forward? I don't know but I'm gonna teach you guys along the way. So that's all I have to say for today. Um, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Let me know what questions you have. I hope this update was helpful and stay tuned. Let me know what questions you guys have on gut health. And um, again, thanks for tuning into The Kelly O Show. I will see you guys on Wednesday.